<clears throat> okay, so here we go. Um, the eyes are great. The eyes are simple. Um, we just went over the eyes. He abbreviates them. What he does better than most people is acknowledge is is showing us actually um, how to get from tear duct to tear duct. So this head is at an angle, um, which is a little bit annoying, but it, whatever. You guys are up for the challenge. Um, what you need to do is get the form of the keystone. So now I'm going to build the keystone overtly. Okay, so I'm going to draw it like hardcore so you don't miss it. And then, um, and then we're going to go and do, I guess we'll probably do the eyes on the left because it's like closer to, eh, yeah, it's closer to the one that I just did. And we'll go over all the parts and we'll go over like how he drew everything. But the key to this sketch is that you have to get the keystone. And the keystone is, the right side of the keystone is what he gives us. So we're going to start here. And then the keystone gives you the beginning of the nose. And then it also is going to provide you with, um, it's the form that is the unibrow. So I'm going to draw it here. Uh, the, the edge of the keystone runs into the eyebrow up here. And then I come across and then it's going to be long and thin up here. But this line here would connect to the eyebrow if he allowed the line to exist. So that goes up there. And then, I don't know, um, the, the part of me wish, wishes, anyway, I, I wish he did make it a little bit stronger. Um, so this is the unibrow area. So I'll put some unibrow dots in there. And then we're gonna come down the side of the eye socket, which he does not really show. There's the side of the eye socket. Here's the front of the nose versus the side of the bridge of the nose. <clears throat> we are going to jump over that. We're gonna jump over and get the start of the, um, the tear duct. So this is the tear duct, this inner part of the tear duct. Then this is the outer moat that I was talking about. We have to get to the location of the outer moat. So this is the inside edge of the eye socket, which is not featured in this picture. They're gonna jump over and we're gonna get the outside of the moat. Then jump over the outside of the moat and then we're gonna get the start of the tear duct gland, which in this case is just this black, um, it's almost like a rounded tipped arrow. That's what this is right here. <clears throat> This is going to be awesome. Um, all right, so from that black uh, tear duct, we're going to come across the bottom, just like how I told you I'd like to make the lower eyelid first. It doesn't. There's there's many different. Um, you can, there's many different orders, and I change the order from day to day. So there's the watermark. It's come across the front of the eye, and then it curls up on the side. Then from this outer moat. We're going to get the thickness of that eyelid comes across and then it wraps around. And now it doesn't look like much right now, but um, these are the component parts. Um, from the tear duct, we're going to go out from that arrow. We're going to do the watermark. So we're going to draw where the eyelid touches um, the eyeball. So it comes down, up, and across. So it goes down, it hits, it basically hits the round, the eyelid, the skin actually touches the round part, comes up around the ball and then comes back in and connects to the other eyelid. It's amazing. Um, all right, so now we have to place inside of that kind of like that football shape Inside of this shape, we have to place the um, pupil and the iris. The iris is the round part. Um, the sclera is the white part. So there's a white shape on this side and there's a white shape on that side. It looks almost like an arrowhead or like a, um, you know, it just looks like an arrow. So the, at the bottom of the arrow is the edge of the iris. And then the top and the side is the 
um, lower eyelid and the upper eyelid. Um, there's one on the other side. You just got to pay attention to the nature of that shape. So on the right side, you get the right side of the iris. It seems like it comes down and kisses the lower eyelid and then it's going to sweep up. The round part sweeps up. I'm trying to mimic both the shape of my iris, which is a circle, which is kind of like the friendly, the friendly um, shape. And then I'm also trying to take on the shape of the sclera. So what does the shape of the sclera look like? Um, and does my sclera match the sclera of the white of the eye? All of these questions I say when I'm drawing actual people. I don't think about anything different, like whether I'm copying um, a, you know, a, a master drawing and learning how, he, how Degas thinks about it, or that I'm looking at nature itself, it's all the same thing. Like I don't, I can't think any other way because this is the only way to do it. All right, so I've got the rounded part of the iris. And then like Degas uses like a weird horseshoe um, like square. Like, do you see how the, the pupil is like, it's a, it's like a, it's like a four sides. He doesn't even use a, he doesn't even use a circle, and he doesn't even complete the top. It's, it's like a wild abbreviation. Um, so we, at least we got the iris, and we, at least we got the pupil, and we can might be able to shade it. I don't know. There's a little bit of tone in there. I think that's helpful. Knowing that the iris is darker than the sclera, there's no other way to make the iris and the pupil darker than the sclera other than like shading it. So that'll be helpful. Um, remember we made the thickness of the lower eyelid, which is great. Um, he makes the line of the lower eyelid when he draws the outside of the thickness, he makes it a little bit darker. Notice he doesn't use any eyelashes, no eyelashes. Um, it's just like his choice. Um, well, there is a very subtle indication of the thickness of the upper eyelid um, if you ask me, it's like underplayed. So we have the watermark where the eyelid touches the eyeball and then we have the thickness of the upper eyelid. Um, I um, look like I overplayed the upper eyelid, but I didn't. I actually underplayed the watermark. So I'm gonna reinforce my watermark and darken that up a little bit. Um, it's amazing when you fine tune your drawing ability like to the point where, I mean, it, most people would look at this and think it's like, right. I look at it and I'm like, there's so much wrong with this, drawing. <laughs> but it's good. But it doesn't, it doesn't have to match exactly as long as you're drawing the right stuff. So by repeating like the mantra of all the things that need to be included, even if they're wonky, even if they're like slightly off, it's going to work. Okay, so let's do this one. Um, from the moat on the outside, we are going to find the nature of her fold. So it looks like it's concave here. And then it hits the top um, of the eyeball and then it starts to go slightly convex, I guess. You know, it starts to go downhill. I'm looking at the distance between the eyelid and the, the fold. Like, so what is the actual thickness of the upper eyelid? And then it like, it looks like it's got a little tail. Cool. So the moat goes up and then it comes across and it's got a little tail. Um, all right, so here's the part that um, I'm gonna offer in the same way that I drew the, um, the keystone up here, which are the lines that he did not include. Um, when you follow the fold, um, it wraps, it comes down and then it wraps up into the brow ridge. So, you know, this, you can actually see it. He, do, he addresses it in terms of tone. So he just like adds some of these straight lines because in his mind, he knows it's there. Um, I'm actually literally drawing the curve to separate that part of the brow ridge. And the brow ridge is gonna be, you know, thin. You know, the, the eyebrow hair is thin, angles up, and then it's gonna come across. And it looks like he uses an S curve. I'm not, um, I don't know about the, the fashions of eyebrows always change. I think they think it's still fashionable to have uh, thicker eyebrows, both in men and women. Um, so you can you know, apply your um, eyebrows according to what you think looks best.
All right, so there's nothing worse than a single eye. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but a single eye in this context um, is gonna, we, we, I might grade myself and I might say, okay, yeah, I'll give myself like a 90 um, on this eye. If I go back and draw the second eye, um, with the second eye in place, I'll be able to come back and notice that there's like so many things that could be adjusted and could be toned. <clears throat> but um, let's just let's just do this. I'm going to come back and refine this later. Um, I really got to get this other eye in because the eyes work um, in conjunction with one another. Um, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to follow the same order of operations. Um, and once you get used to like thinking in these terms and looking for the things, um, then it'll happen really fast. And it's 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 actually a really fun. Um, you know, almost, it's almost like a dance. It's like a mental dance that you go through once you learn the process. Um, okay, so I've got the edge of the keystone and he seems to darken it up a little bit on this side. And I think what he's attempting to do is indicate that there is the inside of the keystone, the part that he didn't draw on this side, the side of the nose and the side of the um, eye socket. He indicates it a little bit by just thickening that line. And then we're gonna jump over um, this little skin part and then we're gonna identify the talon of the um, eye, of the, eye uh, the tear duct gland. And I love that little shape, that little talon shape. It looks like a, a sideways shark fin. The inside of that uh, gland <clears throat> echoes the same curvature as the eyeball. So cool. All right. So the you can now we just do do let's just do the thing so uh, out of that little talon we're going to get the girdle or the belt loop or the rounded um bend of the watermark wrapping around the lower eyelid wrapping around um the eyeball and then we're going to do the thickness of that lower eyelid because of the eyelashes i think he's able to go thicker on those eyelashes you know, on that line rather, not eyelashes. He doesn't actually draw the eyelashes, but it, he draws the thickness of it. He draws the line thicker to indicate that there is eye, eyelash hair there. You actually see the side of the lower part of the eyelid. I didn't mention it over here because um, I have to drop, I have to drop my, I have to drop the paper and I don't wanna do that just yet. But she has um, a nice little, you know, lower, um, eyelid that you know is the part that's you know up against the eyeball and then she's got a little bit of a bag under her eye right here which is kind of interesting um, it's the kind of the, it's like the puffy tissue and fluid that um, helps pad the eye and helps the transition from the eyeball into the eye socket like the actual bone so I maybe it might just indicate you know lower eyelid and I might indicate a little bit of that um, you know, side transition. Okay, but I don't wanna get sidetracked. All right, from that talon, we're gonna come back up. Um, we're gonna get the um, watermark and the upper eye, the watermark and the thickness of the upper eyelid, I think are one and the same. From this angle, it looks like, yeah, it looks like they're the same. And this is the, the fun part for me is always, you know, challenging myself to see, okay, did I, did I estimate the, um, the shapes of the lower eyelid and the upper eyelid? Are they correct? You never really know until you place the pupil and the iris. And she's looking hard to the right. Oh, I got to show you guys this. I forgot that this woman, um, we have a poster at Mitchell School of this huge bouquet of flowers and there's this woman sitting on a table next to it. And this is actually the woman. Um, I've never taught this drawing before, but I've taught that painting so many times. Um, so the, the, the wonderful thing that he does for the iris in this one, he used a horseshoe shape here, a little bit of a rounded, rounded bottom and two straight sides. Here, he gives her a crescent moon and it's so gorgeous. It's like, he, it's like he's drawing the dark side of the moon. And it's like, <clears throat> it's weird. It's like, that's enough. It's just, it's just amazing that that's, that seems to be enough. Um, for me to adjust my line weight to match his. Uh, 
and then it looks like there's a little tone in that iris as well. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this thing perfect. I'm just trying to show the, the terms, show the things to look for. Side of the eye thing. Okay, and now we have to get the fold. Let me move this up a little bit. Okay, cool. Darn. Um, all right, so the fold is, you know, there's, we could come up from here, um, from the center and go back, or you could just go from the upper eyelid and go from the fold from there. Um, whatever it might be. Unfortunately, um, the best part about this drawing, I mean, I have to admit, the best part about this drawing, what if I just zoomed up a little bit? It's still not gonna fit on my paper. Um, the best part of the drawing is going to be the, the brow ridge on this side. Look at this elegant line. So let's just, let's just show you how I would do it. So you get the corner of the eye and then you get the edge of the profile so that you actually see the rounded part of the um, brow ridge. And then you get the start of the cheekbone up here. So there's this little moment where it's like transition from cheekbone into the brow ridge. And then it wraps up from the brow ridge. Follow, it follows the fold, hits the brow ridge, wraps back up, and comes right back into the keystone. It's like the most elegant and most very classical French move. Meaning he does this move over and over again. It's part of the, it's just the part of, um, how you draw a portrait, that's it. It's not like, it's the, the order doesn't matter. You can do it in any order. You can't, there's certain things that you just, if you're gonna draw a human and you wanna have it to look like a human, there's just things that need to be used. And, um, it's, a, and it's, it's wonderful. It goes back to ancient times. I really want you to be able to see the rest of her face. Let's refocus. Yeah. It's just nice when you can, you can see the whole thing in context. Notice how the, um, and I didn't even bring this up, but notice how he's using, he doesn't use any blending stump. Um, he chooses a universe, he's right-handed. So he can choose this direction. If you can actually, you can hold your pencil up or on your page, um, the same direction is used in parallel lines um, indicating tone, tonality. Rather than blending, um, he's he's going, he doesn't need to. He's He's, he's got a, he, you have a, a mentality when you're drawing lines, like what we just did in the eyes and the eyelids and the, and the hair. And then you have a different expression when you're making tones. Um, and it's just, it's just really, it really is something special. And it's very doable. You guys can like, you guys can do this. I love seeing the, and then not only does it, look at the loop from the eyebrow ridge wraps up and sweeps all the way down into the nose. And then it does another S curve into the um, rounded ball of the nose. I mean, look at that. Look at that S curve. I mean, I don't know, man. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's just, these. it's just, it's just kind of like some next level stuff. And you have to be able to see it in order to be able to do it. Yeah, you know, like you, you can, you can make it yours. But you gotta know it exists even to be able to attempt it. Um, I can really tell in my in that the eyes, the the bottom of the iris here is darker. On a, I may not be using employing the same devices that he is but you know there's this little puff this little shadow puff in the corner of the eye the moat seems to stand out a little bit more there's a little bit of the bag under the eye here um, there's a right side bag which has a unique property and then the left side bag and then the underneath of the eyelid seems to be a little bit darker
And then the only thing that my, I mean, my, my, the structure of my face looks better even than his, because um, I think part of what maybe these guys were up to is like, it's like the, the keystone drawing that shape that I made is so fundamental um, to the portrait, but it's almost like, it almost takes the mystery away. And as a, you know, as an artist that's kind of protecting his secrets, he may have actually just erased it to nullify it so that, you know, people didn't see how. It's like a magician revealing his trick, sort of. No, I'm, I have no, I have not, that is just pure speculation. I mean, I have no idea, but I don't know why he, I mean, he clearly used it and then he clearly went back in and erased it. I mean, you can actually see the eraser mark um, on, the piece, on the piece. I'm gonna add some, uh, it's like I, this idea of like punching your lights and punching your darks. You know, you, you can control your line weight and you can, where you want more emphasis you can add higher contrast by, in this case, darkening lines. You can actually emphasize, you know, in a painting, you can add, you know, you can punch your lights as well. Here, we're not really punching the lights because we don't have white chalk. Yeah, that fold goes a little bit darker on that right side eye. Sweet. Um, I highly recommend you all um, go sit in front of a mirror and just draw one of your eyes um, and look for the things. Don't try to draw your eye. Like, don't try to get um, overwhelmed. Don't, don't try to like do anything more than what we just, don't try to sketch anything more than what we're, what we just went over. Um, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, an impossible task. This is, the, these are the keys though. I don't think there was anything that really other than the concept of the keystone I don't you know the between the eyes I, there's nothing that I include that I did there's nothing that I included you know that they got included that I didn't include in my original line in fact he's including less um he's using less he didn't even put the he didn't even really even put the highlight in the eye and you know both sides of the sclera aren't really you know he 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 went softer with some of the lines. I mean, you can see where it's like lost and found or this inner portion of the, the eyelid here, the, the lines just really do go super soft. So he's in more in control of his line weight. But like I said, it's, it's almost more impressive what he left out than what he's including. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice, but so small. <clears throat> All right, two minute warning on this one. <clears throat> 